Hello everybody, my name is Becca. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Pilea peperomioides again and talking about specifically how I make my Pilea have babies. I've already done a video about the Pilea peperomioides, so if you haven't watched that, definitely go watch that video first. In that video, I talk about my Pilea family and I talk about all of the different Pilea peperomioides I have, and all of those plants actually came from one single mother plant. And the reason that that mother plant was able to have so many babies is not because of something that I did, but because of something that the previous owner of the plant did. Now, I have some good news. I do know what she did, and I am going to show you today how to do that same thing. Okay, everybody, so this is my Mama Pilea peperomioides. She probably looks very different than the last time you saw her because when I was on my honeymoon, she grew about seven new gigantic leaves and I took off a lot of the older foliage that was just aged and not looking so good. And so on this plant on the top, we have almost an entirely new set of leaves that happened literally in about 10 days. So something happened to her that was quite sad, but also awesome for the purposes of this video. So she was leaning up against a window, and if you didn't know, pileas do this thing where they follow the sun. Actually, all plants do that, and so it's really important that you're rotating your plants so that they don't become super heavy on one side. I find it especially important with the pilea because these leaves can get really heavy, and if they are leaning off to one side, something really sad can happen, and it can snap in half, just like mine did. <laughs> So what happened was I came back from my honeymoon, saw all this new growth, I was really excited about it, and I rotated the plant, and then I came back a few hours later, and it was hanging off like this, which most people might be really sad about this, but I know that this is actually a good thing and something that I was probably going to do eventually anyway. I bought this plant from somebody else, and it was already pretty mature when I got it. It already had babies, and the way that she was able to achieve that was once it became a full plant like this, she literally just chopped off the top. With a lot of outdoor plants, we know that deadheading, especially flowering plants, is a super good thing for them, and it allows them to grow more bushy um, and at a higher rate. Why would that be any different for our houseplants? And the answer is, it's not any different for a houseplant. So in order to do this deadheading thing, you will look at your pilea in the state that it is in. Hopefully it's a little bit more of a mature pilea that has a stem. There are a lot of pileas in my collection that I would not do this to because they don't have a stem yet, or if they do have a stem, it's not thick enough. So you need to make sure that that stem is, you know, a little bit thick so that it could sustain life. Um, and what I noticed with a pilea that has a long stem, if I would remove a lower leaf when it was looking old, for example, this one is one that I would probably remove at some point soon if it was still attached to this plant down here. I would remove these old leaves and in place of those old leaves, it would grow a baby, which is incredible. And so the more of these I would prune off, the more babies I would get. Once you deadhead your plant, you need to remove all of the lower leaves, which I have done. Unfortunately for this plant, it was growing a baby at the bottom of the stem, and I cannot bring myself to cut it off or separate it yet. So once you have removed all of those bottom leaves, basically you just stick it in water. And it's been in water for about a week, and it already has little roots coming out. These plants are so prolific. I already talked about that in my other video, so I don't need to go too far into it, but they root so fast and they're so easy to grow. Um, and especially, listen to this, in that old video, that plant, this plant was in a north window and it was pretty happy there, but I moved it to an east window in my new house and it has just blown up, hence all of this new heavy growth that it that the stem could not sustain. The new leaves are massive. Like this is pretty big for a pilea, considering all of the old leaves were like this big at most. Look at the difference in size between those leaves. So you put this piece that you cut off, you deadheaded, you beheaded your pilea, and you put that piece in water. And it will grow roots 
eventually. Once there is a significant amount of roots in this jar, I will plant this as its own plant. Hopefully this little baby will be big enough for me to separate it so I don't have to bury it or cut it off and chuck it. And so this is what the stem, the bottom of the stem looked like before it snapped off. Um, I really wanted to show you guys how to remove a baby from the stem. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pretend that I'm doing it because I would really love for this to become its own plant, its own like bushy thing. Um, so I'm going to pretend, I'm going to show you what I have done in the past, but I'm not actually going to cut one off. I have never had a baby come up from the soil in this plant specifically. Maybe that's because it was putting all of its energy and putting babies into the stem. But I do know that if you have a baby come up from the soil, you can either dig it up very, very carefully, or you can just chop it at the base of the soil and stick it in water, and it will root and be happy just the same. So for the stem babies, let me show you. What you're going to need is a sterilized knife. I'm probably going to cut it right here. So I'm going to identify that and pretty much with one swoop of your knife, you put the knife here and then you apply some pressure and you cut it off. And that's really all there is to it. They make it super obvious where you need to cut. And also it's really easy to find out if the plant is even ready to be separated because it'll start to make a little stem of its own. And usually when it is making a little stem of its own, I will remove it at that point. That is basically it. I feel like that's so simple, but um, I know that when I first did it, I was really, really scared to do it because I was worried that I would hurt the plant or do it wrong. But as long as you have a sharp, sterile knife, I used an X-Acto knife at first as well, but I just don't know where that went. Um, I would say don't use scissors because the blades on those are kind of thick and um, if you have some thin bladed scissors or you're a little risky, you can definitely do that. But I prefer to just use a knife, it's a lot easier. And definitely make sure that it is sterilized before you're using it. Um, I washed this last night after I made dinner. <laughs> all right guys, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned a little something about making Pilea babies and beheading your plants. I hope that you have the courage to do so because really, really great things will happen when you do. Don't forget to check out my Instagram page to see where these plants end up. Oh my gosh, I just spilled water. All right guys, see you later. Bye. They're waving. Goodbye. <laughs>